This is an Adria Altia 542DK7. I'm going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, the jockey wheel, hitch, and handbrake is all stuff we'll go through in person here on site. In the front locker, you've got your gas bottle with gas valve on top to open and close off the gas flow going through to the van. You've got your yellow shut off valve on the side that you turn 90 degrees if you ever wish to isolate the gas past the regulator. And the pipe work that goes into the bottle is a reverse thread fitment, so you turn the thread the opposite way to what you would a Coke bottle, for instance, to release the valve, uh, to release the pipe work from the bottle. On the side of the van, you've got your water pump connection. So you've got your water pump that pushes into the side of the van, you pull back the blue trigger to push it in and pull back, pull back the blue trigger to pull it out. The water pump drops down in the aqua roll itself, um, and I'll show you how to fill the system once we go inside the van. Underneath the front of the van, at an angle, you'll actually see the wind down legs for the caravan. There's one of these on either side of the front of the van. And there is a longer um, leg winder in the front locker, which you'll need for this particular van. In the side of the van, you've got your leisure battery, 100 amp leisure battery, and you've got your mains power lead coming into the side of the van also. You've then got your heating and hot water vent on the side of the van, so you'll release this cover to allow uh, anything from the gas system or the gas flue essentially for the van everything's come out the side of the van you've then got your toilet locker in here which you release by pulling up the green handle at the bottom and pulling the set towards you the neck here turns out so you can tip the waist away and on the back of the cassette you've got a green pressure relief button so you can again uh, release the pressure out of the cassette while you're tipping the waist away cassette before use we'll need to take one litre of water and a cap full of the blue toilet fluid and in the top here you've got your toilet flush fill so you take the cap off here you'll put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use on the rear of the van on either side again you've got your wind down legs to stabilize the caravan so on either side you can see that we've got the one down here for the purpose of the handover video uh, normally though when you're on site you'd have all four legs down to stabilize the caravan You would never lift the caravan with the wind down legs because it could potentially damage the floor of the caravan Coming down the door side of the van you have your fridge vents The fridge vents here allows hot air out the back of the fridge unit and also behind one of these there is a gas flue for the gas operation of the fridge You've then got a storage locker so you can access underneath the front seats of the caravan Gonna go inside the van now and demonstrate how everything works on the inside. When you first come into the caravan, you're gonna to need to turn on the master power, so just here. And above that, you've got the voltmeter for the battery on board the caravan. Coming down, you've got your main light switch, and then your lights as you go around individually on these switches below. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is, is to fill the water system on board the caravan. So underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the caravan, you'll actually find, I hope, a drain down valve, which looks, or is, is this particular valve that you see just here. That yellow valve, when it is parallel with the floor, will allow you to fill the water system. So as it is at the moment, like I said, that allows you to fill the water system on board the caravan. To drain it, you'd lift that valve upright and point it towards the bottom of the seat. So bottom of the seat here and that will allow all the water to drain out the system on board the caravan. So like I said, pa valve parallel with the floor to fill the system. I do apologize, the van's still in a mess at the moment, it's only just come out of the workshop, so I'm just getting the video done while we've got the chance. You're gonna come over to every tap on board the caravan, once you've got that valve shut, and you're gonna open all the taps up on the hot side of the water heating. So you're gonna open them all up on the hot side, and that includes the sink in the bathroom and also the shower as well. So sink open. And again, you can open the tap up on the shower itself. Like I said, the van hasn't used to come out of the workshop, so I do apologize for the mess. So open the tap up on the hot side, again in the shower. Then you come over to your control panel and press the water pump switch. At that point, once the water system is full, you'll have water coming out of every tap continuously, as you can see here. To start with though, obviously it's gonna spit and splatter while that system is filling up. 
Once all the systems are full and you've got water running continuously, you can shut all of the taps off and then you can start thinking about warming the water on electric or gas. So on the opposite side of the van, you'll actually notice you've got a few control panels over this side. The top one is the electric water heater. So you've got the choice of uh, normal water temperature, which is around 30 to 40 degrees of water temperature. On the bottom side here, you've got boost. So that essentially will allow the water system to warm up a lot quicker for when you're showering on board the van. Below that, you've got the option to run on gas. So you'd need the gas turned on in the front of the van. And then you've got the option of 50 or 70 degrees of water temperature on the side here. So essentially, if you want to run the water at 50 degrees, you'd flick that switch upwards towards the 50 degrees. The boiler will self, uh, ignite with the cover removed on the outside. Cover isn't removed at the moment, so it's not going to ignite. So you've got 50 or 70, like I said, self-ignite. And if it ignites, you'll get a green light on this side and a red fail light on this side. If it ever fails to ignite, I'd advise you go to the hob, get the gas through to the hob on the cooker, and at that point, you should have gas through to every other point of the gas system on the caravan. So like I said, electric water heating at the top here on 230 volt if you connect it to mains power, gas below. I would advise if you're going to shower on board the caravan that you also, if you've got the electric on, that you also turn the gas on. So whether it be on the 50 or 70 to allow the water system to boost. Below that, you have your control for your mains, uh, your mains power heating on board the van. Now down the side of here, you won't actually be able to see it in the video, but there's a 500, 1000 and 2000 watts down the side here. What that indicates is, is the amount of power that's coming into the caravan. So for instance, if you're on a site with 500 watts available, you could select the 500 down the side here by spinning the outer dial, which you can see just here moving. And then once you've got the power supply selected to what you've got coming into the van from the site you're on, you can control the temperature of the heater on the dial on the front here, so between one and nine. The green light that comes on when you've got mains power connected and it's connect and it's um, and the power source is selected that you need will actually be the dot to indicate where the temperature needs to be put to, or essentially where you'd put the temperature over. So at the moment, I've got the nine over the green dot, which means the heater is working to its maximum efficiency. Next up, we're going to go to the heater itself. So on the heater, you've actually got the option to run blown air. So you'll notice around the caravan, there is some little vents down the front of the van, as you can see here. And what that will essentially allow you to do is, is to operate blown air if you wish to. You've got the fan speed for the blown air on the dial on top here. And around the bottom of it, you've got another dial on the outside here with this white line on, where you can select manual blown air, so continuous blown air essentially. So, for instance, if you've got the heated on, the heat would come out the vents around the van, a bit like in your car. Or you've got automatic blown air, so essentially it cuts in and out with the thermostat on board the van. So essentially if you've got the thermostat turned, or you've got the heating turned on, and you want the heating to kick in and out as it drops and uh, rise in temperatures in the blown air system, you can do that by selecting the A here, and again you can control the fan speed on top. To, can, to operate the uh, heating system on gas, you'd spin this dial round on the right hand side to uh, where the five is, hold down the gas valve, then down the front of the heater, when it does ignite, you'll have a pilot light through this window. Again, at the moment it won't ignite just due to the fact I've got the cover on the outside. Once it has ignited, you'll continue to hold down the gas valve for a further five to ten seconds to allow the thermocouple to warm up. Once it has warmed up, you can slowly release the gas valve, then control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. We're going to go to the fridge next. Again, it's very, very simple to use. You've got uh, two different options on the front of here. We're going, to press, oh, we're going to press the options here. So on the left hand side, you can select the power source you're using. So as you can see at the moment, we're using mains power on the automatic setting. So every time it's on this, it will automatically go to the power source that um, is connected. So obviously at the moment it's mains power. You've got mains power, so, it just, so you have to select it manually. You've got 12 volt mode, and you'll notice at the moment it's flashing an error code to let me know we're not connected to anything with 12 volts. So essentially the car you normally tow with at the front of the van, if you've got the right connector on the car, will allow you to use blown air, uh, uh, sorry, will allow you to use 12 volt as a source of chilling the fridge when you're traveling down the road. 
If you're wanting to use gas, you can select the gas mode here. And again, at the moment it's not turned on, so it's not going to ignite. But if you wanted to you use gas as the power source, and if you're on gas or mains, you can control the temperature of the fridge by pressing the button on the right hand side. You can turn the fridge off by pressing it and holding the power button just here, and the fridge will turn off. The last part of the caravan inside the van, because the cooker and grill is self-explanatory, works very much like your household appliances, is the toilet system from the inside of the van. So essentially, on the side of the toilet, you have a handle here to allow the waste to go in the toilet set underneath the van, so you'd open that flap up. Then you have a press button here, which allows the toilet waste to go in the cassette underneath the van. On the side, you have an indicator light here. When that illuminates red, essentially, the toilet waste cassette under the van will be full. If you have any further questions on the Adria Altier, please do give us a call here at the Caravan Company, and we'd be more than happy to help. Like I said, I do apologise that the van isn't all clean when you've seen the video, but by the time you arrive on site, it will be fully cleaned. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you enjoy the caravan. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.